Gaming peripherals can add up quickly, especially with the top end products. What if you're looking to get a budget set? And I mean a real budget set. What could you get? These are the top three gaming bundles under $50. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back and I hope you're doing well. Today we're looking at gaming bundles. These include a keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, and headset. These were all $50 on Amazon and the best part is that they're all advertised to be able to work on various platforms such as PC, PlayStation, and Xbox just to name a few. Also stick around because I'll be giving my favorite one away by the end of the video. These are the top three gaming bundles under $50. Shall we? Number one on our list, we have the four piece RGB bundle from Bluefinger. The contents of this bundle are pretty simple, but I found them to get the job done when needed. This comes in a nondescript tan box and includes a 104 key keyboard, a 2000 DPI mouse, headset with adapters, and a mouse pad of course. The simple packaging makes me think this was an assortment of various products that Bluefinger had on hand. Moving forward, the keyboard is a full size Windows keyboard with 104 keys present. The switches are rubber dome membrane that has a noticeable tactility when the key is pressed. It's something similar to a brown switch I'd say, with around 50 grams of force needed it feels like. The RGB mode is turned on with the scroll lock button and only has a static rainbow setting which is a bit unfortunate. The illumination is pretty nice looking since the keyboard has no raised borders that you can see under each key. The minimal look to it makes it one of the best on this list in that regard and is also complemented by a woven USB cable. This is red and black and I measured it to be about 57 inches long. The keycaps are sprayed ABS that have a decent font to them and adds to the RGB presence I mentioned before. They feel pretty cheap when taken out and examined, but that's just the nature of everything on this list. These are also pretty nice in the way they have a bit of texture to them, but can collect dust pretty easy as you can tell. As for gameplay, they actually held up for long hours as compared to other sprayed ABS caps. But before we get to the gameplay, there are some drawbacks we need to cover. The board feels very cheap, even compared to others on this list. There isn't much deck flesh from pushing down, but it gives a very flimsy feeling to it. Probably worst of all however, there are no rubber grips on the bottom of the keyboard and it does slide around easily. It wasn't actually that noticeable game though. Don't do anything stupid. The gameplay of this was surprisingly fun once I got used to it. And just as a note, all the gameplay footage you see here was me using all aspects of the game bundle at once. So that's keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, and headset. Regarding just the blue finger keyboard, I was worried that it would be sliding around my desk, but it was surprisingly stationary and easy to use. The actuations also felt like brown switches, so it was easy to use after my Ampro too. The end key roller is 19 switches, so you don't have to worry about ghosting. And the keystrokes feel like around the 50 gram area, like I mentioned before. Looking at the mouse now, this design is actually popular in these budget kits. It's not the last time we'll see it in this video. The look is very aggressive, similar to that of the G502. The blue finger mouse has six mouse buttons and four different DPI settings of 800, 1200, 1600, and 2000. The manual is pretty slim, so this is all the specs I got on it. The four different DPI settings in the mouse that are signified by different colors of the LED diffuser that are seen through the cracks of the shell. The shell is also a mix of glossy and matte plastic. Another aesthetic is the red and black braided cable that comes with the mouse. This is actually the same appearance as the keyboard cable. I measured it to be about 58 inches long as well. It's not a great mouse cable, but it's not bad. The weight of the mouse comes at 126.9 grams, so definitely on the heavier end. Looking at some other performance aspects, it has three black Teflon mouse feet. They're arranged with one large one on the bottom edge and two on the front edge. 
The mouse pad that comes with the Blue Finger Combo is a cloth pad with a stitched edge. It's a very slick and smooth surface that allows for it to glide easily while playing. It has a nice rubber base to it that keeps it in place and measures the dimensions to be about 12 and a half by 9 inches. Using both of these in Tile Frenzy, it took me a bit of time to get used to it, but I was eventually able to score a high 90s. And finally, we have the headset in this kit. It's a pretty simple and cheap build, frankly. There's also some spelling and grammar mistakes in the package, which is kind of funny. In the box, you'll find it comes with a splitter, so you're able to use it with PCs as well as consoles. The cable is only 56 inches at its longest, which I think is way too short for a headphone cable, though. It does have an inline mic mute as well as volume control, which is nice. The design features a matte plastic that makes up most of the construction with padding around the ear cups as well as the top portion. The stand is not included, but I'll link it in the description since I got a lot of questions about it on Twitter. There is of course an adjustable headband that allows for a custom fit. When wearing these, they feel very light. They also have a microphone on the left side, which we'll test now. The sound from this Blue Finger headset is pretty much the same as the others on this list. What you're hearing right now is stock directly out of this microphone and has no filter over top of it. It just sounds a bit hollow and a little bit like it doesn't have depth or bass or anything like that. Now you're hearing the same microphone but with an audio preset that I use on all my voiceovers in my videos. It just goes to show that you're not going to be able to get that studio quality sound, but it's not bad for the price considering it's just supposed to be a gaming headset. The audio quality from the headphones was also fine for what I was expecting. You could get a sense of direction of enemies' footsteps and things like that, but it was nothing game changing. One big drawback I found was the ear cup wasn't deep enough and it hurt my ears after playing for a while. The short cable is very annoying and it was one of the limiting factors to this set, as well as things like not having media keys on the keyboard. I'll also put a sound test later in this video if you're interested. All in all, it's not a bad choice for $49.99, but there are better sets out there. Second on this list, we have the all-in-one value kit from MF Tech. This also comes in a nondescript tan box and comes with a mouse pad, a very nice TKL keyboard, a gaming mouse similar to the previous Blue Finger kit, and of course a headset with adapters that allows it to be used on multiple platforms. Another very simple bundle here. Now moving forward, we have the keyboard which is the star player of this bundle. It has 87 keys and falls in the very popular TKL category. This makes it functional with the arrow keys in the bottom right hand corner that some smaller footprint keyboards don't have. It also has MIDI controls in the top row of the function keys. By using the function button, you're able to do a variety of tasks with it. This includes music controls which are actually pretty easy to use. Let's talk about the appearance now. The boxy sort of frame does make it look like a bit of a keyboard that you'd find in a library, but this does make it an absolute tank. There's no deck flex and a lot of force required to try and bend the board. This is hands down the best built keyboard on this list. While the look is pretty plain, I don't really mind it, especially with a subtle hint of RGB that shines through the font. Speaking of which, the font is very much the sort that you'd find in a productivity keyboard rather than a gaming keyboard, so it's very easy to read. The only lighting option is the rainbow mode in static or breathing, with the ability to turn up or down the brightness. There is no external software from what I could tell. Progressing now toward the performance aspects. The standard height setting appears to be around 4 degrees of incline, with two additional risers to bring it up to around 7 or 8 degrees. There's also four rubber feet on each corner to keep it locked in place with little movement. The keys are again rubber dome memories than we saw in the previous bundle. The keystrokes feels like they have a little bit less travel to them, maybe around 3mm as compared to the standard of 4. They are very smooth with a slight tactile bump that was great for gaming. Right from the beginning, the stability of this keyboard was noticed and made for great gameplay. I was actually very confident in using it in Warzone, which is speaking a lot about this kit. I actually racked up 10 kills in a solo game. Oh, I hate using the shotgun. 
Similarly, it was very responsive for the fast-paced gameplay of multiplayer matches in Modern Warfare. Another stat that I forgot to mention is the end key rollover, meaning all keys are non-conflict. Nice shot. Like I said before, I used this entire gaming bundle at one time when I was using it. Now we have the gaming mouse. And no, I didn't include the wrong mouse. This is the same exact design as the blue finger mouse. The stats here should be identical, but I'll highlight some of the claim differences. On this mouse, it claims to have four DPI settings that are higher at 1200, 1600, 2000, and 2400. But this seems false to me because it played the exact same. So I'm gonna say it has the same DPI of 800, 1200, 1600, and 2000. The weight is also 119.5, which is about 6 grams lighter. This was probably influenced from the positioning of the cable. Besides that, it has the same 3 Teflon feet, same matte and glossy design with glimpses of the LED diffuser underneath. It also has the exact same red and black cable that's about 58 inches long and of course the same clicks and feel. I'll put a sound test later on in this video for the mice and keyboards. Now, Similarly, we have a red and black themed mouse pad, but there are a few differences. It's slightly smaller at 11.5 inches by 9.5 inches, but the biggest difference is the damage with the two slight creases. It was unfortunate in the way they packaged these. It did however have the same rubber base and slick surface that allowed me to get the same sort of score on Tile Frenzy. As far as I'm concerned, the mouse felt the same overall as the blue finger combo. And finally, we have the headset. This is a much bigger and bulkier design, but I kind of like this aspect of it. I think due to the larger and deeper ear cups, it was much more comfortable. It fits very well and felt much more natural as compared to others on this list. The cord is also very long at 88 inches when the adapter is attached. This is something I appreciated. The cord also has a USB plug that I think is only for lighting and not performance. There's also an inline mic mute and volume control on the cord. Speaking of design, it's made mostly of plastic and actually doesn't feel as solid as you would expect given the size. The audio quality was good, but it had very low volume settings. I had to crank it to max when I was gaming to be able to hear it and frankly it was pretty hard to use for basic things like Spotify. We'll also do a microphone test right now. The sound you're hearing now is directly from this MF Tech microphone and has no filter and no audio preset over top of it. As you can tell, it's definitely very similar to Blue Finger 1. It's very much hollow, a little bit low in bass, but that's what you get for gaming headsets, definitely not bad. What you're hearing now is the audio preset that I put over all my videos, like I said before. It just shows it's definitely not up to that studio quality, so it'd be tough to stream with, but it's definitely not bad for the price. Overall, this kit had similar characteristics to that of the Blue Finger one, yet some of the cons have been improved, such as that as a short headset cable and flimsy keyboard. This is a well-deserving second place, yet there is more to be desired. Number 1 on our list, we have the Red Dragon S101 Gamer Bundle. This is an extremely popular bundle and it is for good reasons. While we usually start with the keyboard, we'll start with the mouse in this bundle, which is the star player this time. It's a symmetrical, ambidextrous design, but it has a lot of curves and angles on it. I don't really have any mice that are shaped exactly like it, but here are a few examples. There are mouse buttons on the left side, with one being raised dotted pattern, one being a smooth surface. It has nice comfort curves and indentations on both sides. There are also flared out points on the back side that fill out the hand pretty well. The DPI is controlled with button on the top, with four different pre-programmed stages on the mouse. I believe it's auto set on 800 DPI because I was able to use it right away. The max DPI of the sensor is 3200. I think there's also some software you can use with it, but I honestly couldn't really figure it out. The mouse cord is a braided red and black cord that does have the same appearance as the previous mice, but it's a little bit more flexible. It weighs about 100 grams in its stock orientation. When you take out the additional weights, it comes all the way down to 80 grams. That's about two thirds of the weight of the other mice in the other bundles we talked about. There are four black Teflon feet arranged on each corner of the mouse that allows for awesome performance. 
For Tile Frenzy, I didn't just perform alright with it, I set a personal best for any gaming mouse I've ever used. This put it above the Model D and even the D Pro Wireless. You can see why it's a star player this bundle. The mouse pad is also a very nice complement to it. It has the same sort of stitch edges and slick surface that gives the mouse really easy movement. The bottom is also very grippy rubber texture. Next up, we have the keyboard. This aspect of the bundle, while not as impressive as the mouse, still holds its own. It has the same sort of rubber dome membrane mechanics that we saw with the previous two. The keycap is thinner than the other two boards, yet it has the same stem design. Even with the lower profile keys, the total travel and actuation are normal stats of 4mm and 2mm respectively. The actuation force is also around 55 grams. For aesthetics, I don't really like the full size layout with all these curves around the frame. Makes it look cheap in my opinion. This layout is packed full with 114 keys and 10 dedicated multi and media keys, as well as 12 function keys that allows for two different ways for media control. The RGB also has some of the best customization we've seen on here. There are seven different static colors to choose from, as well as different RGB modes, and there are four different levels of brightness available. There's a little bit of deck flex and a bit of frame bending as you can see here. In terms of build, however, it does come with risers as well as rubber feet to keep it locked in place while gaming. Right away, this bundle was easy to use. This was most likely in combination of the high performing mouse along with a very easy keyboard. It comes with non-conflict keys and it has nice rubber texture on the keys for performance. Come through my stream if you're ever interested. And finally, we'll take a quick look at the headset. The audio is okay for the most part. The bass is pretty low, but there's still ability to get directional feedback in game. The volume level was a lot better and was actually able to use it for normal tasks like music. The entire build is mostly plastic with cushion on the top and around the ear cups. The comfort is pretty good since how light it is. The biggest problem is how shallow the ear cups are and how they cause a bit of discomfort over time. The 88 inch cord with the adapter was useful though. We'll test the mic now. Now for the mic test, what you're hearing right now is unfiltered, unedited audio that comes right out of this microphone. This is going to be what it sounds like right out of the box if you're playing on console or PC, and it very much has the same problems like the other two headsets on this list, where it's a little bit hollow sound, not much depth to it, not much bass. Now what you're hearing is the audio out of this microphone, but it has a preset put over it like I use for all my voiceovers and all my videos. I definitely wouldn't use it as a stream microphone or anything like that, but it's definitely not bad as an intro gaming headset as it's on par with anything else within this budget range. Overall, this is hands down my favorite set from this video. I picked this up for $50 on Amazon, but the price has been fluctuating between $50 and $60. There is, however, a combo that is just the mouse and keyboard, which I think is a great deal for only $40. You can fast forward to a sound test and giveaway details at the end of the video if you'd like. We're going to look at the other kits I reviewed and the ones I do not recommend. This is the Have It Magic Eagle Gaming Bundle. This is another four-piece kit and it is an honorable mention that nearly made it on this list. I had high hopes for this bundle when I took it out of the box. It came with a full keyboard layout, mouse, mouse pad, and headset with adapters. I played several games with this bundle and some problems immediately arose. Firstly, the mouse felt delayed and pretty sluggish. It was noticeably difficult to play with. Secondly, the mouse pad was quite damaged and was pretty tough to play with also. It's unfortunate the way they packaged this. The keyboard and headset were decent at least. It wasn't enough to save this bundle since the price fluctuation of $70 also made it tough to justify buying. Now, moving on, we're going to look at the gaming bundles to avoid. The first bundle I would not recommend getting is the 4-in-1 Hornet Edition from Orsley. The biggest reason for this is that the mouse feels extremely cheap. This is also the only mouse in this entire video that doesn't have any side buttons. The board is also extremely flimsy. The mouse pad also has this weird crinkle around the outside edge of it. The headset too is also cheap and it's nothing special. This bundle overall is not worth $50, unlike some of the bundles we previously saw in this video. And finally, we have the Fantech 5-in-1 bundle. I had high hopes for this kit since it also comes with a headset stand. The number one drawback to this bundle is the very high lift-off distance of the mouse. It made resetting the position nearly impossible. The software also didn't work for me. The rest of the three pieces of the bundle were decent for the most part. 
This is just under $50 on Amazon, but it was unavailable for a lot of the period I was looking at it, so you might not even be able to pick it up right now. That concludes the main part of this video. We'll do a sound test in the order I recommend the bundles. You can skip the giveaway details at the end if you'd like. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helped you in some way. Like I promised, I'm going to be giving away the Red Dragon Bundle. All you have to do to enter is make sure you like this video, subscribe if you aren't already, and comment down below. Your comment can be whatever you like, but you have to leave your Twitter handle because that's how I'll get in contact with you if you win. Since this package is quite large, I'm going to be limiting this giveaway to only United States unfortunately. That's all I got for this video. You can watch me test gear live at my Twitch linked down below. Thank you again guys for watching, hopefully catch you next time.